In this lesson today, 4.4, we're talking about permutations again. Uh, we, you know what permutations are. They're orders of things that where uh, arrangements where order definitely matters, right? Um, but this is a bit of a twist here. So what happens when we have some of the objects are identical? How does the arrangement of those things, how does that change when some of them are identical? You can see in this, uh, in this investigate here, which we, we, might not, we won't follow all the way through, but you can see here's a situation where we have uh, seven plates and three of them are identical white plates. I'm not sure what kind of serving plates you have at home, but we have all white stuff at home. My wife likes all just the white plates and bowls and everything. It's all the same. She just thinks it's nice and neat and clean. Nothing fancy on it. There's no, there's, everything's the same. So we have all white plates, but there are some holdouts from before that we have some special plates, especially the, <coughs> the kids like, and some of those plates have little puppies on them and little flowers and different things. So in our cupboards, <coughs> we have plates that kind of look like this. We have some that are truly identical and some that are very different from, from one another. And so if we were taking a look at an arrangement of all of these plates, if they were all different, that's like the stuff that we've done leading up to this, right? If they were all different, then we would just take seven factorial, right? That's the total number of arrangements where all of them can switch positions and all of them can switch order. Just seven factorial. The thing is, when we have some identical objects and you switch those identical objects, you switch those places, that's actually not a different order anymore because they're identical. So that order hasn't changed. So let's just go to the notes here. And the example I'm going to use is just a really simple one. I'm not going to use seven plates, just going to use three letters. So this is the word add, okay? It's a very mathy word. Um, but it has two identical letters, okay? Add, A, D, D. Now, if we were to arrange these letters, okay, if I moved one of the Ds over here and made dad, that's a different arrangement, right? But if I was to switch the two Ds now, okay, I'm switching them, okay? That's still the same arrangement. When those objects are identical, that's still the same. So this is not a different arrangement. The same holds true if I switch the Ds over here. Okay, let's say I've switched those. Well, that's not a different arrangement, so we can't count that one. Okay, this one's okay. Right? That one's okay. But are there any others? A, D, 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 A, D, or D, D, A. If I switch these two Ds, like, hey, I'm switching them right now. Can you, you can't tell. That's not a different arrangement. So it looks like we have three <coughs> legitimate arrangements there. Now, before, when we had three... Um, different objects, we would just do 3 factorial, right, which is 6. But when two of them, two of them are the same, we see that the number of arrangements uh, is decreased by quite a bit, right? And so what happens is there is a pattern. Um, here we divide these by 2, actually, to get now 3. That's how many arrangements we have. So where does this 2 factor in? It's not divided by 2 all the time. But instead, this, this number here is actually connected to the number of repeating objects that you have. Okay? And it's actually the number of repeating, if you have two repeating objects or object that repeats itself twice, then that would be divided by two factorial. So here is the, um, here's the formula over here, which I will uh, bring over for us, if I can, kind of into the notes. This is actually now the uh, expression that, that you want to use. So let's just break this down. Copy this down here. The number of permutations with identical objects looks like this. So this n is still the total number. Okay? Total number of objects. And these down here, these uh, factors down here, these parts down here, this is the number of identical objects of a certain type. So if um, for example, the D repeats twice. So one of these is going to be a 2 factorial for this example. If you had other letters that repeated as well, you would also put those down here in the numerator. You would divide by those as well. So uh, we'll come up to examples like that. But these are the basically the numbers of repeated objects. And, of course, there's factorial attached with each. So if there's two identical letters, you have two factorial. If there's another set of three identical letters, you would also multiply in the denominator by three factorial. So let's do some more examples, and um, 
this will be a little clearer for you, okay? So the next example is Canada. Let's take the, the word Canada and find out how many permutations we can have. Well, there are one, two, three, four, five, six letters in the word Canada. So six factorial is definitely going to be part of what we're doing. We have to take into account that we have three A's in there, okay? So the first type of repeated object is A, and there's three of them. So we have to divide by three factorial. Now we look again, and are there any other repeats? Well, these are all different letters here, right? C, N, and D. So there are no other repeated letters, so we're done. And this is going to be our answer. This is how many arrangements we could uh, arrange the word Canada in. So this is 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 factorial, divided by 3 factorial. Right? So if you just remember how to simplify this, you could do this on your calculator, but it's, it's just really good to remember how this simplification happens. So 6 times 5 times 4, that's 30 times 4. It looks like 120. Does that sound okay? All right. So 120 different ways. All right. So keeping on the uh, Canadian theme here, here's, um, here's another city in our fine province here, Saskatoon. So I'm going to give you a minute, and I'm going to see if you can come up with how many different permutations that we could uh, make with the letters in the word Saskatoon, taking into account that we have now more than one letter that's repeating. So why don't you give that a try from what you know right now. Okay, so it, we've got the letters in the word Saskatoon. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine letters. So that's where the nine factorial comes from. Okay, now we have some repeats. So let's take a look at the S. <clears throat> we have one, two S's. Any more? Nope, two. That's where this two factorial comes from. Do we have any others? Well, looks like we have also two A's. And that's where this two factorial comes from. And do we have any others? Well, it looks like we do have two O's right there. That's where this two factorial comes from. Now, is that, is that it? Is there anything else that I'm missing? Or is that it? Well, you could just, if you want to scratch out the ones that we've already kind of taken care of here, right? There is K and T and N, and none of those are the same. So we are, we're done. So let's evaluate that. Nine factorial. What's nine factorial? Or you could, it's probably just easiest to do 9 factorial for sure. On the bottom, you might be able to just do this in your head instead of taking the time in the calculator. This is 2 times 2 times 2, right? So that's 8. So what's 9 factorial? Anybody got that? Sorry? Okay, did you get this one? 362880? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, and then divide by 8. What's that divided by 8? 45,365. Okay, did you get this for an answer? Who got this for an answer? Okay, about half of you. Okay. <laughs> All right, that answer has been confirmed. Good. Okay, so um, I'm going to do an example with you from the textbook here now. So let's, let's go to the textbook and... Which example is that what I was going to do? Okay. All right. Let's take a look at let's take a look at this one. Okay. So, in this example two here, solving a conditional permutation problem with identical objects. This is very similar to the conditional problems that we've been working with in the in the previous sections. But what we'll do is we'll take a look at how that changes slightly um, with uh, repeats. Okay. All right, how many ways can the letters of the word Canada be arranged if the first letter must be an N and the last letter must be a C? Okay, so very similar to what we've done here, except uh, in this other example, except we do have some restrictions. Okay, now there's a, a few different ways you can attack this. I like using the fundamental counting principle when I can, and then the permutation formulas also when I can, because that's sort of, to me, makes the most sense. You can visualize it a little bit more, plus you get the calculator to do most of the work, so it's the best of both worlds there. So, um, let's see. The uh, first letter must be an N, okay? The last letter must be a C. All right, so how many Ns do we have to choose from? Well, it looks like just one. And the C is also just one. So we have one choice there. So if you want, you can just kind of like 
cancel those out. And the letters in the middle, right, and I'm going to group them all together here because we have one, two, three, four left. And that's an A, an A, a D, and an A. And so I have left, I have four factorial. If I want to find out the number of arrangements that we could have in here, four factorial divided by what? There are three A's, identical A's, so we divide by three factorial. Okay, everyone see that? So one choice for the first position, this many choices for the middle part, and then one choice again for the last position. So that's a bit of a combination, um, pardon the pun there, com you don't know about combinations yet. Uh, that's a combination of fundamental accounting principle and permutations. So what is four um, factorial divided by three factorial? Yeah, you should know that pretty, pretty uh, quickly because four factorial looks like this and three factorial looks like this, right? So it's just four. Okay, let's see. Now let's see, uh, does that match up with what they did in the book there? Yeah, it sure does. A is four and you could actually write them out if you want. Okay? Any questions so far? Okay, we're going to skip these examples for now um, uh, as far as the uh, roots, involving the roots examples. So that's going to be the lesson for today. Uh, here's the in summary. It's kind of a short lesson. But basically, repeating objects, you need to divide by the number of uh, identical objects factorial. And then if there are a different set of uh, repeating objects, you need to also consider those as well. Okay. <coughs> All right. And your assignment is going to be here. Let's see, that's 4.4. So 1, 4, 6, 17, and 18 will be optional for you. 1, 4, 6, 17, and 18 is optional. So you can get to work on those. And you do have lots of time. You should be able to finish those even in the class time that I've given you. Any questions? I have a question. Okay. Just give me one second here. I'm just going to show the textbook here for those that want to see that. And of course, you can do any of the, uh, any of the other questions for uh, extra practice. The root questions are great as well, but I just, I'm just not going to be covering those in this lesson here today. We're going to avoid those. Mm -hmm. Quickly, yeah.